Have you ever wondered how to start a birthday scrapbook layout? And you may have two photos, they may not both be portrait, and you're not sure how to start the page. I have an idea for you, and sketches are a great way to get started. My name is Amanda Farlier with From Where I Stamp near Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And I have these three fun sketches, scrapbook sketches, and how you can use them. And we're going to do sketch number three today. So this sketch here, we're going to use um, the Thunder layout that I created the first part of May. And that video will be linked at the end of this video. So make sure you go and watch that for other ideas as well. So um, this is the Countryside Inn Designer Series paper, but we are going to use the um, Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper. So this gorgeous paper, and um, let's just remove that. And we're going to start with this Azure Afternoon. It's one of the new colors. So this Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper um, includes... Um, a lot of different colors of the new ones. So we just had a color refresh, Stampin' Up! did. And um, I ordered their, we have this 12 by 12 pack of new core colors. So that means you get to get a 12 by 12, oops, 12 by 12 pack of all the new and returning colors that you can use with your scrapbooking. So this is a great thing to get because you get a variety of colors from a bunch of the different color families and you get two sheets of each color. So we are, we are going to use this Azure Afternoon paper and, oops, my light decided to not work. There we go. All right, so for our sketch, it calls for two photos, both portrait, but I am going to use, I have a portrait and a kind of landscape. So birthday photos. If you're not someone who likes, get your photo taken at your birthday. Get your photo taken at you on your birthday or around your birthday with your family, uh, with your pet, with a child, with a niece or a nephew or, or grandchild or whichever. But you don't have to scrapbook them or you can scrap them just for yourself. So then you can look back. So I'm scrapbooking photos from 2011. And I remember I did not want this photo taken, but you know, my mother insisted. So I have these photos <clears throat> from that day, which I'm really glad. And I'm sorry, the color's all wonky on my screen. It was fine with this. So I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Um, but anyhow, no, anyway, this is blue, this is purple. We're gonna go for it. So I have a four by six and then a four by four and we're just going, cause there's a little milk jug. We're gonna put these over top of each other. So on this layout here, they are over top of each other but I'm putting the, the one on top in the center. That will also hide um, kind of the center seam a little bit because we have the six by six paper and this here, I've cut off the top pieces and then for these pieces that'll go down here, I've cut off the top pieces. Now, because um, this is six by six and it does have a little bit of pattern to it, usually I would suggest to take one six by six piece and cut it and use it again. But I decided that it was too much kind of a, a difference that I'd rather, even though this is kind of a difference, it's kind of this line is about the same here. So you do have to play around with some of the six by six paper sometimes. But those are options for you when using six by six paper. And because this is 12 by 12, all you need to do is just have two of them. Now our bubbles aren't gonna match up, which is that's just how the cookie crumbles. And our edge here is not gonna match up. So if you're a little more finicky about it, you can find a, you know, not use this um, kind of design for your six by six paper. 
Um, but that's up to you. So we're going to layer these two pieces. Now these have some fun diamonds, not diamonds, triangles on the back. So that could be a fun um, layer as well. But I was, what I do when I figure out what photos I want to use, then I go looking at what designer paper would be best with it and then um, decide what I'm going to do for um, colors based on the designer paper and using the photos or photo as inspiration. Okay, that one did not. Well, it's still kind of wet. All right. There we go. So I decided for my, there's a, a third, so there's one, two, three layers here. So my for third layer, I'm going to use some early espresso. And I, I, I do have a 12 by 12 in early espresso, but because the 12 by 12 cardstock comes in just one big pack for the whole color family, I decided just to use eight and a half by 11. So there's about a half inch on either side. It won't matter. It's not a big deal. And you just want to, oops, that's not going to be centered. You just want to center it on your page. And whatever amount, because we're going to cover this up. So whatever amount is past this piece here is what you want. Oh, that's a very bright yellow stripe. There is some beautiful designs in this pack, in all of Stampin' Up's paper, actually. And um, it's on sale in June for 15% off. So this pack of designer series paper would normally be um, $17. So during the sale, it's on for $14.45. And you can purchase as many packs of what's on sale. So the Countryside Inn on the Thunder Rules page um, is also on sale, as well as this Bright and Beautiful. And um, the link below will have um, the link to my blog, which will have information on this layout for you, how to sign up for that email list, as well as a link to purchasing the products. All right, so our four by six is layered. So this shows up a little bit better now than it did on this, just the plain Azure afternoon. And I will see a little bit here and here, but this is mostly covering up that joint. So not a big deal. And then this one, we're going to just tuck under there so that little milk jug is just under here just a little bit. I felt it was important to keep that in the photo just because it it seemed to work pretty good. Um, so let's bring in the other layout. So we have, oops, we don't need to see that paper. So we do have our two photos and we have our three layers here. I'm going to forego a big title like this because we're going to do some stamping here in just a moment. And then we're going to use this with a stamp and circle punch. All right, so we are going to use, we're going to move this out of the way. Whoops, don't lose the photos. Um, some basic white and some fresh freesia. And we're going to use the circle saying stamp set with the coordinating punch. So this, these are two new products in the annual catalog. And it's perfect for birthday. There is a coordinating stamp set and sweet all around the um, uh, bright and beautiful items with balloons and it's gorgeous but I didn't feel like it was me not something that I wanted to use all right so now I have to decide without losing the photos because we're going to do this and we're going to have the circle over here so I think I'll do white so I don't think unless I put the up there but I think white white is the color to use Okay, so we're going to stamp a cupcake in the middle of our circle. So we have this celebrate circle. And we have the cupcake circle. I think the cupcake's what I want. Mm, yes. Okay. So we're going to use some chocolate or chocolate early espresso. 
it was my birthday last week, so I have chocolate ice cream cake up in the freezer, and I haven't had a slice yet today, so I know I would really love to have a slice. Um, now, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to use Azure Afternoon, because there's a lot of the Fresh Freesia already on there. And I have my Simply Chamois here wet with some water, so that way I can clean this stamp. Oops, you can't see me stamping. So it's just tap, tap, tap down here so I know it's fairly close to the edge so that we can punch. If you put it right in the center, oh, you put it right in the center, it might not turn out that great. Now, I, I brought this Stampin' Mat, Stampin' Pierce Mat down, and then I forget to use it. Um, so with our photopolymer stamp sets, there's no um, cushion on them because you see right through them. So it's nice to have some kind of a cushion underneath it to stamp well and then you just turn your stamp on the simply chamois to get it all cleaned up hopefully and i like putting my stamps back although that one did not come clean very well okay maybe it's just me still looks kind of bluish and then we're gonna take our little cupcake here and put it in the middle and you could have it pointing the icing pointing whichever way you'd like whatever works so we'll put this away now i forgot to grab my wink of stella so wink of stella is a, a glitter I don't know what I don't know what it's called. No, I don't want to do that. There we go. It's a glitter pen, a glitter brush. Glitter brush. That works. Um, so I'm just going to smush the lid a little bit. The lid. So we get some ink transfer. You can pull it directly up from the um, pad if you want it, but this way I'm not getting that sparkle see the sparkle in there so i just want to make the icing all chocolate because my cake in my photo was a chocolate a chocolate cake so that's what i'm going by can you tell chocolate's my favorite chocolate's my favorite if you can't tell and so we'll just use a little bit of this espresso because it's close enough to chocolate. And then we'll get some really dark chocolate. And I'm going to leave the, 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 it's not really that much dark, darker, but um, I'm going to leave the cupcake liner white. I could come back through and, um, you know, take some fresh freesia or something. And then you just want to wipe off the ink. You might have to use a little bit of water. I wouldn't use water, actually. Um, use a, a little bit more of the Wink of Stella until it comes out clean on your paper or Kleenex tissue, whichever. And uh, I don't want to do that because I just cleaned it. So, unfortunately, I probably should have waited until after I had it punched out so I don't get the Wink of Stella all smushed. But here's hoping. All right. So, punched it. There we go. So now we have our circle. Celebrate, celebrate. We can bring back our layout. So let's put this together. So... We're going to put these photos down. So I would recommend if there's a time when you're not sure if you want a photo taken, get the photo taken. You can always delete it later. Just put it away in a file folder. Don't delete it. Put it in a file folder. Um, and you never have to look at it again. And maybe 10, 20, 30 years down the road, it might be neat to look back. This is from 2011. This is neat to look back. I don't know if I would be happy to scrapbook these um, 
photos back then. I'm not sure. I probably would be because it's it's me. <clears throat> but it's okay if there's photos you have and you don't want a scrapbook. All right. So now I kind of like that up there. What do you think? I like it up there. We're also going to add um, happy birthday. And hopefully add it right onto the Azure afternoon using Azure afternoon. Now I waited until after we had, I'm going to put this put that over there for now. So I want to make sure this gets a good, good ink, but good stamp. So what I want to do is, whoops, almost put the pack of the block right into the ink. Whoops. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get this to work and not mess it up. So we're going to do happy birthday. Happy birthday. We're going to do it three times. Happy birthday. Yay, I did it. And that will dry a little darker because it is wet right now. It's a little darker. You could also use uh, Versamark ink if you wanted something lighter or even a lighter blue like um, balmy blue might work as well or boho blue. But um, basically, I just wanted something just to call attention to the birthday part of this layout. Colors are just weird today. All right. So now to finish off my layout, I will add some journaling and I will use some Azure Afternoon cardstock and journal. I'm not sure what I'm going to journal on this one yet. It might just be the date um, from 2011, but we're going to add some sparkle in here first. Because it's always fun to put some embellishments on here. And if you had uh, candles, a, can a stamp set that had candles in it, or maybe even the balloon stamp set, or and dies because it has a matching dies that coordinate with this paper, then you could um, add those, and that would be kind of fun. And get off, get off. There we go. It's always neat to do scrapbook or um, birthday scrapbook layouts because sometimes it's of yourself. Sometimes it could be your dog or your kids or a family member or a friend. And um, I find it's interesting to do different paper and you don't always have to use a birthday style designer series paper. So just a reminder that um, the link to my blog post will be below in the description. And um, that's a, a link where you can find the products as well as a link to sign up to the emails to receive um, the scrapbook sketch that we use today for, to create this layout. And also stick around. Um, the next video will be the one to create this the Thunder layout. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.